majestic, mysterious. Mount Kinabalu, towering guardian of the tropical island of Borneo. Spiritual home of the Kadazan Dusan people and a world heritage site. It's home for some of the most unique species of plants in the world. Below the mountain to the east, the farming district of Pouring quietly stirs. It's early morning as Marius Garbin begins his day. But he's a farmer with a difference. Marius is the caretaker of a giant. This man has devoted his life to one of the biggest, smelliest, and strangest plants on the planet. It's the juggernaut of the plant kingdom, the gigantic Raphelisia. Growing up to a metre wide and smelling of rotten meat, this is not the kind of flower you'd give your valentine. This monstrous plant is also extremely rare. But Marius has been unravelling its secrets for years. He has dedicated his life to this jungle giant. I became aware of the Rafflesia in 1988. During that time I was given the task by Sabah Parks to monitor Rafflesia. But being the biggest doesn't make you the toughest. The flower's home in Mount Kinabalu's rainforest is in danger. Drought caused by climate change and deforestation is threatening its habitat. If the forest disappears, then so will the Raphelesia. So as the young Marius watched over the flower in the wild, a seed was sown. So itu dalam through these experiences, the idea of growing Rafflesia in my own garden entered my mind. With their home under siege, the only way to ensure their survival was to artificially cultivate them. So Marius decided to take on the challenge. But the best gardeners on the planet have struggled to grow this botanical heavyweight. Growing a garden of Raphelesia would test Marius's patience. Marius has waited six long years for this tiny bud to grow. Once the bud is formed, it will need another nine months to grow big enough to bloom. Luckily, Marius is a patient man. Inspired by his childhood love of nature, he took on the task that has been baffling botanists for decades. I grew up in a family of farmers. I have always been interested in nature and wildlife since I was very little. Growing up on a farm and near the rainforest, Marius understands the complex network of factors that influence how plants grow on this tropical island. Piercing the clouds above 4,000 metres, Mount Kinabalu is home to over 5,000 species of plants. Shrouded in mist, the peak concocts a brew of warm, moist air, the perfect conditions for these tropical plants to thrive in. But the Rafflesia is unlike any of the thousands of plants that cloak the mountain. It has many secrets. To cultivate this mammoth flower, Marius would have to understand its complex life cycle. In rainforests like these, a dense web of connections exist between plants and animals. Every species depends on the other to survive. Many flowers rely on insects for pollination, and the Rafflesia is no exception. 
but it's a more unusual matchmaker. There's a good reason why the flower smells like rotten meat. It's to attract flies. A roving fly will travel up to 200 meters between flowers to get a whiff of this strange smell. But both male and female flowers need to be close enough for the fly to cover the distance and open for business. But it's not only the fly that helps the Rafflesia. The flower relies on another plant for its food and water. The Rafflesia is a parasite. It grows on a special kind of grapevine. Once the bud has opened, it's a race to reproduce. The flower has only five short days to pollinate before it rots into the ground. Six years and nine months of growing for less than a week of life. But there's another race against the clock for the Rafflesia and it's more urgent. It's the race to save these forests, the only place on earth it calls home. It is true. Rampant deforestation is one major factor of the Rafflesia habitat loss. If Marius can't work out how to grow the flower, like the forests, they could be gone forever. For decades, scientists have been trying to cultivate the flower from seed, but with little success. There are indeed many scientists who have made research about Rafflesia, either in Malaysia or outside of the country. Some are successful in their growing of the Rafflesia, and some failed. Most scientists use a microscope and DNA testing, but I don't use any of those. I only have the simple laboratory to rely on. So how could a farmer with limited training and resources successfully grow a garden of Rafflesia? Growing a Rafflesia in captivity is a task that has stumped scientists for centuries. The methods that I have been practicing are not scientific ways, but only through experience. Understanding the flower's mysterious life cycle was the key. There was a vital piece of the Rafflesia puzzle missing, cultivating the seeds in captivity. After the flower is pollinated, its fruit produces hundreds of thousands of seeds. But these seeds will only grow inside the stem of the host vine. So how do they get inside? If they fell, they wouldn't penetrate the vine's tough bark. It was the scientist Louise Emmons who discovered it was a tiny tree shrew that was responsible. She observed the animal feeding on the pulpy fruit of the flower full of seeds. It then sharpened its claws and teeth on the vine. From my experience, we learn from the animals and their roles in the process of seed dispersal in the forest naturally. This was a key piece of the puzzle that would help Marius in his quest to cultivate a garden of Rafflesia. Armed with his hands-on approach and some simple tools, Marius applied this discovery and succeeded. Like a tree shrew, Marius carefully transfers the seeds from the fruit of the flower into the stem of the vine. But even with its life cycle complete, 
there are still many threats. First, insects, pests, the larvae, the insect injects itself into the bud and it will die. The second is a fungal disease. Fungus is one of the major factors, damaging the vine and the bud. Thirdly, something that cannot be avoided, the long drought. Because Rafflesia need a lot of water, when it is too dry, most small buds will die. Insects like these will make a meal out of the bud, and fungi can kill it. Covering the bulbs helps protect them from pests and the heat of the sun. But the dangers aren't just natural. His bulbs are sometimes poisoned or destroyed by jealous locals. There were a lot of challenges, a lot of trouble when I first started. People were envious of me. Marius has to keep an eye out for Raphlesia poachers. A black market also threatens the flower's survival. It's a highly prized botanical specimen and sometimes used in traditional medicine. Apa yang saya tahu sejak dahulu lagi bahwa Based on what I know, Rafflesia is known to be a form of traditional medicine and herbs for postnatal mothers. It takes dedication, passion and very green fingers to keep this flower growing in captivity. But the work has its own rewards. As a Katazan Dusan native, I am very pleased and this is what I stand for now. If possible, this is what I will show to the next generation, so the conservation method will continue, so that it will not become extinct. That is my purpose. And being a conservationist comes naturally to Marius. When not looking after his Raphlesia garden, He's busy in his role as a park ranger. Marius and his colleagues are working to ensure the rainforests and the Raphalesia will be here for future generations. This garden is established now and this success we will pass on. Today my wife and I are still working on it, but our daughter Vivian, who is still studying at university, after she graduates, she will take over. Marius has not only pioneered the growing of the Raphalesia in captivity, he's developing a new industry for himself and for others. His Raphalesia garden provides an alternative to selling land for cash crops. It's an investment into their future. It is better to work the land yourself. With this, the land can work for us. If we sell the land, in an instant the profits will run out. Then there are no benefits for future generations. This is my advice. Those who have land near the tourist route, come on, let's do it. And I am willing to give guidance and my time to help develop your land. Because our place is rich, it is rich with vegetation. That is all. Like a magnet, a Raphalesia in full bloom attracts visitors from all over the world. They've come to witness this rare moment in the flower's life. Safely tucked behind an enclosure, a Raphalesia with an impressive girth is on display. This is Marius's life's work successfully growing a garden of Rafflesia and it's thriving. I'm really lucky to, uh, to see it actually. It's fantastic. It's big. Very nice to see. It's great. Marius is indeed the giant's guardian. Conservation, everyone should be involved. Like the former President of the United States said, conservation from the people to the people.
If everyone is involved in conservation, our planet may survive. We will be safe. Our plants will be safe. Our aflesia will be safe. Oh, my God.